Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the service today. Thank you for your love that gathers us together. Thank you for your spirit that enlightens us in your word, getting us ready, preparing the bride for the coming of the Lord. We're asking, O oh Lord, that your word will penetrate every heart and prepare us as wise virgins waiting for the bridegroom. We're asking, O oh Lord, that today all that you still need to do, all you need to chisel out of every life so that we'll be conscious of your coming, watchful for your coming, prepared for your coming, ready for your coming. You do it in every life in Jesus' name. Make us all ready that when the Lord will come, none of us will be ashamed in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody shout, Amen. We're coming to Revelation chapter 16. And I'm reading from verse 1, reading from verse 15, and reading from verse 19. Revelation chapter 16, verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Understand? Upon the earth. Not only Jerusalem, not just Judah, not just Israel, not just uh, a part of the world. Pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Verse 15. It says in verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Verse 19, it tells us, And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. We have said it over and over, the believers will not go through the great tribulation. True, but understand that the Antichrist, a man, a lawless man, a wicked man, a cruel man, a man that will come to devastate the whole earth at the time of the great tribulation. Listen to this. He will not be a baby at the time of the rapture of the church. He would have been in the world. He would have been preparing to be a great leader of the world. He would have known that the world is waiting and looking and searching for a man that will guide them and the world will be looking for peace. And this is not the Antichrist, will not be a baby. It will be a man that had been in the world while we're here. Only preparing his way and finding a path, a path of supposed peace to come to reign over the earth. Actually, the ten kingdoms of the world that will be under the direct leadership and rulership of the Antichrist, they would have been developing. And then the time will come when the rapture will take place. And when the rapture takes place, then the great tribulation will come in terrible force. But the Antichrist would have been here. He would have been doing some of the things he will do. At the time of the Great Tribulation, he would have been doing that in preparation for this full swing of his reign. So understand that while the church is still here, the Antichrist would already 
be here before the rapture of the church he is not coming from heaven he is not coming as a grown up man created like Adam he is a person of the world and he would have been here that's the reason why even at this time in the last days before the rapture of the church while the antichrist may be somewhere growing up and developing and developing all his strategies that's the reason why the church at this time will be watching that's what we're talking about today prayerful watchfulness in the last days we're living in the last days any moment from now the rapture can take place and because we're living in the last days you and i in the last days we need to watch we need to pray so that when the lord will come and then he will take the church home and the antichrist will come forth and come through in the whole earth and rule with cruelty and bring unprecedented wrath on this earth you and i will not be here at that time in jesus name prayerful watchfulness in the last days there are three things we're looking at as we look at this uh, as we look at this chapter number one the perverted wonders of the foul filthy beast the perverted wonders of the foul filthy beast number two the prayerful watchfulness of fixed faithful believers the people who are going to be ready, who are going to go with the Lord when he comes, that the people that search their face like a flint, they are looking for the coming of the Lord, and they are waiting for the coming of the Lord, and they search their mind, they search their focus, they search their gaze, they search their affection, they search their attention on the coming Christ and they remain faithful not the people who are wishy-washy believers the people you don't know where they are one leg in the world and one leg in the church the people you don't know they have one mind for the world and the other part of their mind for heaven the people who are going to get ready for the rapture for the coming of the lord are the people who are faithful focused and fixed believers waiting for the coming of the Lord. Number three, the punishable wickedness of falling, forsaking Babylon. Babylon will be so dirty and so defiled that God will say he's giving himself to fornication and to filthiness. Ephraim, in this case Babylon now, is devoted, is giving to idols and filthiness. Let him go, forsaking of God, and then it will fall woefully. It says, the punishable wickedness of falling, forsaking Babylon. Number one. Number one is the perverted wonders of the foul, filthy beast. We're coming back to Revelation chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 1. Revelation chapter 16, we're looking at verse 1. As we look at this section, the perverted wonders of the foul, filthy beast, there are three things we're looking at. Number one, unavoidable punishment for lawless worshippers. The people of the world will be lawless. The people of the world will be disorderly. The people of the world will be adamant in their rebellion against God and they will worship the beast and their punishment will be unavoidable. Number two, undisclosed power of lying wonders there'll be lying wonders deceptive miracles that the beast will perform the false prophet will perform but the world will not know about the source of those wonder signs and miracles undisclosed to them and because of that they will fall for the power of the antichrist number three 
on endurable plagues, something man cannot endure, unbearable, unendurable plagues for lustful wanderers. There'll be people that were wandering about. They wander from this assembly to that assembly. There will still be church in quotes. At the time when the great revelation begins, there will still be a kind of worship. You see, when the true church is gone, the militant church, the triumphant church, when that church is gone, the nominal church will still be on earth. And that nominal church will still be carrying on religion as usual. And then those who are wandering about because of the plagues, because of the pain, and because of the terrible things happening in the world, they wander from here to here, but they aren't going to find anything at all that will bring any ease for them. But they will have unendurable plagues because they are lost for wonders. Let's come to Revelation chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 1. Look at verse 1. It says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. All the seven angels will pour out the vials upon the earth. Look at the first angel in verse 2. The first angel were told, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. The first went out and he poured the vials upon the earth, and they were told their fairly noisome, grievous sore upon me which at the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image look at the second angel we're looking at verse 3 the second angel now in verse 3 and the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea let's look at the third angel verse 4 in verse 4, and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blood. Let's look at the fourth angel. We're looking at verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Let's look at the fifth angel. This is in verse 10. In verse 10, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the siege of the beast. That's upon the throne of the beast, in the palace of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness and big notch their tongues for pain. Let's look at the sixth angel now in verse 12. In verse 12, it tells us, and the sixth angel poured out his vials upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Verse 17, the seventh angel, and the seventh angel poured out his vial upon the air and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne of a saying it is done it is done it's complete it's fulfilled it's poured out upon the earth all those seven angels at the time of the great revelation they will pour out the wrath of God upon the earth understand upon the earth no country will escape the wrath and the indignation and the fury and the anger and the judgment that comes at the time of the great tribulation. That's the reason why if anyone is going to get ready and escape the coming indignation, the coming wrath, it is now. I pray you will not be here. 
number one in this area is the unavoidable punishment for lawless worshippers look at verse 2 again in verse 2 it tells us and the first went out and poured out his fell upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous so upon the men which had the mark of the beast look at this and upon them which worshipped his image which worshipped his picture which worshipped his statue which worshipped the representation of the beast look at isaiah chapter 13 we're reading from verse 9 isaiah chapter 13 reading from verse 9 behold the day of the lord cometh cruel both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it it's a time of wrath a time of judgment upon the sinners on earth look at verse 11 in verse 11 it tells us and i will punish the world for their evil some people say the time of the great tribulation will be a limited time a limited pouring out of the wrath of god upon a limited section of the earth not so not so look at that verse 11 i will punish the world for their evil anywhere in the world there is evil and there's evil everywhere there's evil everywhere all have seen and come short of the glory of god all are still sinning and they're coming short of the glory of god all the earth all the world and the wicked for their iniquity and i will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible in verse 13 it tells us it says and I, therefore i will shake the heavens and the earth i will shake the heavens and the earth don't think there's any any place to go and hide any place will be there'll be a refuge at that time begin from the wrath of god it will be upon all the earth and the earth shall remove out of her place and in the wrath of the lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger there will be anger at that time. Revelation chapter 11, reading from verse 18. In Revelation chapter 11, reading from verse 18, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name are small and great look at this and shouldest destroy them that destroy the earth that's one of the purposes of the wrath of god at the time of the great tribulation to destroy to destroy them that destroyed the earth there will be unavoidable punishment of lawless worshippers look at number two here number two is the undisclosed power of lying wonders in revelation chapter 16 we're reading from verse 13 at that time people and the devil when the devil does something that looks miraculous and that looks like wonderful it is to seal their destiny the destiny of the people of the world so they will never listen to the truth look at this revelation chapter 16 verse 13 and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon number one out of the mouth of the beast number two and out of the mouth of the false prophet number three those spirits like filthy dirty loathsome frogs what will they be doing at that time look at verse 14 in verse 14 for they are the spirits of devils they are the spirits of devils walking miracles you know there are people that don't have any discernment at all 
And because the, the undisclosed power of Satan is walking there and walking there, they're saying, well, miracle is miracle. Wonders are wonders. And I don't want to die like this and perish like this. Look at the problem I have. And they have been praying. You know, the kind of prayer they're praying is not soulish prayer. It's not spiritual prayer. It's not fervent prayer. It's not something that cuts deep into their heart. It's a superficial prayer that lies on the surface of the sea of their problem and because of their superficial prayer not being answered they say they hear miracle is over there miracle is over there was the source of the miracle and was the foundation of that miracle and was the channel of that miracle they will not find out but it says in this verse 14 for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth of the earth every time it mentions the events and the devastations and the deceptions in this in this period of tri tribulation time it says of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now, the miracles of Christ will not point anybody to fight God. The miracles of Christ will not uh, call anybody to fight sound doctrine. The miracle that Christ performs will make people to believe and to surrender and to give their lives to the Lord and to worship the true God and to turn away from the dead idols. But the miracles of the devil, the miracles of the false, uh, of the false personalities, of the evil spirit is to gather the people together, seal their minds, harden their heart to fight against the day of God Almighty. Jesus already warned us that in the last days when it's about to come, that the spirit of the Antichrist will already be at work and there will be all those false, deceptive, pseudo miracles, signs, and wonders in Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 24, here is the prediction, the prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs. Jesus said they will show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The miracles that deceive the heart, the miracles that distract the heart, the miracles that turn away the heart from the Almighty God and from salvation, that's not of God. The miracle that turns away the heart from holiness and righteousness and from salvation from the Savior, that's not of God. That if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. In verse 25, Jesus said, Behold, I have told you before, I pray you'll not be deceived. I will not be deceived. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 9, it tells us about what will happen at that time of the great tribulation. But remember that that mystery of iniquity is already at work even now, even before the coming of the Lord, even him who's coming is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, deceptive wonders, wonders that will lead souls away from the Lord. In verse 10, it says in verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love for the truth that they might be saved. There are people that say, well, what am I looking for? You talk to them about salvation. They say, I don't need that. You talk to them about holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. They say, what do I need that for? I have miracles already. I have signs already. Any sign, any wonder, any miracle that turns the heart of a man away from salvation, 
that's lying wonder that's a wonder that makes wants the people to perish look at verse 11 in verse 11 it says for this cause god shall send them a strong delusion or allow them to go their way that they should believe a lie miracles that come with lying wonders miracles that come with deceiving doctrine miracles that come with lies of the devil and they believe the lie in verse 12 it says that they all might be damned to believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness look at number three in number three it's talking about unendurable plagues for lustful wanderers and look at uh, proverbs chapter 21 verse 16 proverbs chapter 21 reading from verse 16 it says the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead the man that wanders out of the way of understanding, he goes away from where salvation is preached, where the gospel is declared, where the good news of Christ of Calvary is made plain. He goes out, he's wandering about, and now he is in the congregation of the dead that the sound of the gospel cannot penetrate the ears anymore and the light of the gospel cannot be bright before him anymore and the sound doctrine that prepares us for the coming of the lord is not relevant to him anymore he faces the danger of perishing and he's going to have unendurable plagues. Look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, uh, I'm reading from verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 5, uh, reading from verse 12. Having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. The people who believed in God in the past, but because now they're looking for miracle, they're searching for miracle. They, they don't know that the miracle is coming from Christ. And so they go to false Christs. They go to false uh, uh, places of worship. And they go to the Antichrist. They say Christ has not given them miracle. Antichrist, do you have any miracle for me? And the Antichrist say, well, if you allow me to harden your heart, if you allow me to seal your doom, if you allow me to put you in doom and damnation forever and ever, I can hand you what? Have a miracle for now for a few days to so enjoy that and then for all eternity there'll be indignation and wrath and punishment and plague for those people who are deceived it says having damnation because they have cast off their false faith look at verse 13 in verse 13 and with that they learn to be idle wandering about wandering about from house to house from congregation to congregation congregation wandering about from assembly to assembly and not only idle but tatlas also and busy body speaking things they ought not i pray it will not happen to you okay i'll say it for myself it will not happen to me in jesus name in jude verse 13 jude chapter one only one chapter and we're looking at verse 13 there it tells us raging waves of the sea forming out the ocean wandering stars wandering stars wandering stars they cannot stay and they cannot stand and they cannot be steadfast where salvation is where holiness is what sanctification is, there is something that is pushing them out of the congregation of the saints. And they become wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. I pray that will not be you in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, the Lord is saying, because the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. 
He wants you, he wants me, he wants us at the church, at the militant church that will become the triumphant church and the rapturable church. He wants us to watch and to pray with a fixed mind with a faithful attitude and to remain believers unto the very end the prayerful watchfulness of fixed faithful believers we're coming to revelation chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 15 behold i come as a seal if you judge christ to be truthful if you know christ to be truth personified whatever else you hear from any other person you know that christ has spoken the truth he said i come he is coming and then he said i will come suddenly while the ten virgins are asleep then the bridegroom will come the redeemer will come the king of kings the lord of lords will come it says behold i come as a thief suddenly he will come and then unannounced a thief does not announce the time he comes to the house and knocks at the door i am here i announced to you before i sent a permission i was coming I am here, get ready for me now. I want to steal what is precious there. No, the thieves don't do that. He says, I come unannounced. I come suddenly. I come very soon. I come when many of the people in the world will be asleep spiritually and they will not be ready. You'll be ready. I sleep, but my heart is awake looking for the blessed hope and the coming of our lord jesus christ you'll be waiting for him you'll be watching for him and when he comes you will not be taken unawares in jesus name and then he says blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest you walk naked and deceive his shame there are three things we're looking at here number one the prophetic word on christ's return the prophetic word on Christ's return. Number two, the practical warning on constant readiness. The practical warning on constant readiness. Number three, our prayerful watchfulness with Christ-like righteousness. Let's look at number one. Number one is the prophetic word on Christ's return. Look at that, chapter 16 of Revelation again in verse 15. And remember, these are the words of Christ. If Paul the Apostle says something by the Holy Ghost, we know that thing is real and is confirmed. A Peter, by the leading revelation of the Holy Ghost, says anything, we know that word is firm. When Christ himself, sent by the Father, energized by the Spirit, and then when he looks at the program, the timetable of God, and he says something, that thing is settled and steadfast forever and ever. His word is settled forever. And Jesus said, Behold, I come as a thief. I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see a shame, as you understand that keepeth his garments. You know, if you are preparing for the wedding, and you have a special clothes you want to put on on the wedding day, you don't say, you know, go where there is mud and flood, and then you are wearing that a wedding garment, and you are walking leisurely, and the cars are passing, and they, they splash all kinds of rubbish on that garment. 
if you are putting on the wedding garment you don't go into the kitchen and then you are you know juggling oil and pepper and tomato and all the onions and everything splashing on the wedding garment that's what it means we're living in this world and we have the garment of salvation we have the robe of righteousness you're not uh, you know going near dirty people with that robe of righteousness and garment of salvation you're not going near occultic people you're not going around the people that will splash rubbish and dirt on your garment that should be ready for the coming of the lord you preserve yourself from all those dirt or dirty things that's what it means so that you will not be ashamed on that day look at revelation chapter 3 verse 11 in revelation chapter 3 we're looking at verse 11 the prophetic word on christ's return it says behold I come quickly i come very soon hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown it's assuring us we already have a crown you've been a christian now for five years for 10 years for 20 years and you've been serving the lord faithfully the lord has a reward waiting for you I'm talking about somebody there. I said the Lord has a reward waiting for you. And you want to hold fast, you know. You've just graduated. And here is your certificate. And you wrote your name there. And then you said, I didn't know I could earn. I could have a certificate like this. And there are people, they specialize in stealing. They can steal passport. They can steal certificate and they can cleverly remove that person's name and put their name. And then this is a person who just puts the certificate there. It's is labored, is studied, is worked hard for that certificate, and he puts it there. He's so happy, he's so joyful, and he thinks everybody is happy and delighted with him. And then while he's turning away, somebody steals the certificate. Satan will not steal your certificate of entry into heaven. And then, where is my certificate? Where is my certificate? That's why the Lord said, what you have, that testimony, what you have, that triumph, what you have, that overcoming life, what you have, hold it fast that no man take your crown. Nobody will take my crown. We're looking at Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. Revelation chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 7. It says, Behold, I come quickly. Now, if Jesus said something once, that's important. If he says it twice, it's doubly important. If he says it three times, if he says it seven times, you can be sure that thing is the most important fact you ought to hold, you ought to grab. It says again, behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sins of the prophecy of this book. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, behold, I come quickly again and again and again and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be look at verse 20 there in verse 20 he says it again he will testify this six saith, surely i come quickly amen even so come lord jesus is coming again I said it's coming again. It's the prophetic word that cannot be contradicted, that cannot be cancelled. Look at number two. Number two there is the practical warning on constant readiness. Practical warning on constant readiness. We're looking at Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13 verse 32. In Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 32, But of that day 
and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Hold on here. There is a revelation. There is a mystery. Part of that mystery, we know Christ is coming. Part of that mystery we know very soon, suddenly, unannounced, he will come. And then there is one part of that mystery that is not known to any king, any ruler, any leader in the world, not known to any prophet, any preacher, any pastor, any apostle on earth not known to any angel gabriel or michael in heaven not known even to the holy ghost even to christ but only the father has a monopoly of that fact and he keeps that fact and anybody that says i know the day of his coming is a damned and doomed liar because that truth and that date is kept only in the heart and the mind of the Father. Now, if the Father God in heaven keeps that as a secret, will not even tell his only begotten Son. How can a man somewhere, anywhere come and say what God has not revealed to the Son, he has revealed it unto me. It's a damned and doomed liar. They will not lie to you. They will not deceive you in Jesus' name. But of that day and that hour, knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Verse 33. In verse 33, take ye heed and watch and pray. For ye know not when the time is. That's what calls us to constant readiness. In verse 34, it tells us, For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who led his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work. And to every man his work. Now, when our children go for the exam, every child is given his or her question paper. And everyone is given the paper to write the answer on. And if that child, instead of writing on his own paper with his own name, will take the paper that belongs to another person and being generous and being nice let me write it for you and then he writes for this other student and by the time they are collecting the papers his own paper is empty it has nothing he has not written anything on his uh, own paper, but he's busy writing on the paper of another, and the college, well, his paper has zero input, and the paper is going to score zero. He may be intelligent, he may be energetic, she may be a kind of generous whatever but there is zero entry into his paper and it's going to have zero what am i saying the lord has given every believer every child of god his work and if there is a believer that will not concentrate on his work and is busy on the work of another person, on the assignment given to another person, and is busy and is sweating and doing what belongs to others, but his own record is empty. He's not interested in what God has given him. He records zero and is going to score zero and there'll be no reward on the final day. I will not be a foolish worker. I said I will not be a foolish worker. 
you allow the others to do their job and then you concentrate on your job because the son of man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and he gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded them the porter to watch verse 35 in verse 35 watch ye therefore for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at evening or at midnight or at cock crowing or in the morning look at what jesus is saying there he's saying you don't know when the lord will come he says in that verse 35 it says at evening when the day's work is over and somebody says it's evening time i want to go and relax in the cinema house i want to go and relax in the nightclub he may come at the evening what will he meet you doing it says or oh, at midnight in the midnight he comes when people are supposed to be sleeping the previous day was a careless day the previous day was spent wasting your life in sin and then you slept tomorrow you're feeling guilty but then you say i'll settle it tomorrow morning i'll be all right in the morning and then in the morning i'll, I'll take extra time to have quiet time he comes in the midnight where will you be or oh, at crowing or in the morning the lord is telling us we should be constantly ready and constantly watchful and constantly prepared when he will come then he says in verse 36 it says let's come in suddenly he find you sleeping spiritually verse 37 it says what i say unto you my immediate apostles i say unto all watch we will we'll watch you will watch so that that day will not come upon you unawares in jesus name we're coming to luke chapter 21 reading from verse 36 it tells us watch ye therefore and pray always watch ye therefore and pray always what does that mean temptation comes don't talk watch pray trial comes something pinches you something irritates you something wants to wake up the dead beast and the dead lifestyle in you to get angry and then to make your peace and then to fight don't do that watch and pray at every time when the tendency and the breeze of the world may come upon you to react like the people of the world and to get ready to fight it out and to forget about your Lord's coming watch and pray always sometimes when you are happy you misbehave sometimes when you're happy when some people are happy they go to drink they're excited and because of their excitement they forget themselves at that time when good things happen and you have the tendency of becoming careless and speaking flippantly because you're happy watch ye therefore and pray always that she will be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man you will be ready say i will be ready number three now number three is our prayerful watchfulness with christ-like righteousness with christ-like righteousness he tells us in first john chapter 2 verse 28 first john chapter 2 we're reading from verse 20 we're reading from verse 28 it says and now little children and now young believers and now standing believers who are much younger than john the beloved abide in him abide in his word abide in your conviction 
abide in the work of grace that the Lord has effected in your life. And now little children, believers, beloved believers, abide in holiness and righteousness that when it shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed at his coming. There are people who will be ashamed when he comes. They'll be ashamed because they're not ready. They'll be ashamed because they're like foolish virgins. They'll be ashamed because uh, something pulls them down. The load of sin, the weight of sin, their besetting sin pulls them down. They'll be ashamed because they are careless. They'll be ashamed because when they could have gotten ready and be washed and be cleansed in the blood of the Lamb, they were not ready. But it says, little children, abide in Him. Abide in everything he has done in your life that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. I pray you will not be ashamed. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. First John chapter 3, verse 1. In first John chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. In verse 2, it says, Now, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. That will happen to you you will see him. The church will not go and leave you behind. You will see him in Jesus' name. And then in verse 3, it says in verse 3, and every man, every woman, every person, every creature, every child of God that has this hope in him, purifies himself even as he is pure. Look at verse 7 there. In verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. The people who are waiting and expecting to be ready when Christ will come, they're the people who are righteous, even as he is righteous. They have Christ-like righteousness it tells us in titus chapter 2 titus chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 12 it says teaching us that the grace that appears to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lost worldly lost will try or want to sneak back into your life you deny it you debar it you stop it you resist it teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world verse 13 looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great god and our savior jesus christ in verse 14 we're told who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works you'll be ready i will be ready the righteousness of Christ will still be full in your heart when Christ comes in Jesus' name. While you are in church, you are righteous. If you are not righteous in church, you cannot be righteous any other place. When you have sin surrounding you, 
when you have the word of God being preached unto you and when you have all other believers they are praying asking to be ready and when you have everybody sitting well standing well and everybody centering their affection on things above in the church if you cannot be righteous in the church you cannot be righteous any other place but the people who are waiting for the coming of the lord in the church they're righteous at home they're righteous in the community they're righteous in the office they're righteous whatever is happening they say i'm not going to miss that rapture you will not miss the rapture in second peter chapter 3 verse 11 second peter chapter 3 we're looking at verse 11 it says seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness and then in verse 12 it says we're looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of god wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat but then he tells us in verse 13 he says nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness and then in verse 14 it says wherefore beloved seen that she look for such things be diligent that she may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless i pray when that day comes you'll be ready if there's going to be any number one to be ready you'll be the number one to be ready in jesus name we'll meet up there i said we'll meet up there you'll be there and every sanctified soul every righteous soul everyone that is washed in the blood of the lamb will be ready and your place will not be missing on that day in jesus name when he comes which nobody knows because he can come anytime when he comes sanctification that you have will be intact in jesus name and the holiness and the righteousness you have will be intact in jesus name and at the sound of the trumpet when the dead shall rise and then we which are alive shall be caught up together to meet them in the air then that magnet from heaven will magnetize you and take you up up you'll be there and then so shall we forever be with the lord you'll not be missing in jesus name now point number three after we are gone something will happen over here in the world the punishable wickedness of falling forsaking babylon look at revelation chapter 16 verse 19 revelation chapter 16 verse 19 and the great city was divided into three parts now when it says great city what's your picture of a great city you know sometimes there are um, there are people that qualify and that estimate how great a city is and they look at you know what makes a city great they look at the economy great city they look at the road network networks great city they look at the healthcare, great city they look at their educational institutions great city and they look at their tourism great city they look at the living lifestyle the living standard of the people great city and then other people even from here and from there they're rushing to that place we've heard it's a great city but they don't know what will happen to the great city i pray in these last days god will keep us will not be running helter skelter in jesus name 
the people who run to great cities where there's no real Bible believing fellowship. There are people that run to great cities where idolatry and fornication and evil and worldliness is just filled the place. All they're looking for, they're looking for good economy. They're looking for good education. They're looking for civilization. They're looking for this and that, not knowing that very soon, in a few hours, in a few days, all the greatness of that city will be wiped out by the indignation and the wrath of God. It says, and the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, the fury and fierceness against filthy Babylon. Filthy Babylon. Look at any great city today. They are a picture, a replica of the great Babylon. Crime is rampant in all those great cities. And when Christ comes and the bride of Christ is taken out of the world, there'll be the fury and the fierceness against filthy Babylon number two, and the fire forever for forsaking blasphemers, blasphemers, the people that will blaspheme God, they're not satisfied with just forsaking God and leaving God alone. They recognize God is there in heaven and all their punishment is coming from that great God and the fury and the fire is coming from that great God and they will be blaspheming and the Lord will forsake them and then they'll face the fury of the fire forever and ever. Number three is the faith and the faithfulness of firm believers. The believers who say the sea may rage we're firm believing the Lord and the storm may come but we're firm in believing the Lord. Persecution, trial and temptation may come but we're firm and focused and fixed in believing the Lord and we're going to abide in the Lord forever. Those people you will never be compounded. You will never be ashamed and the glory of God will be upon your life and when you will come you'll not be found wanting in Jesus name I thought the church will give a good amen number one number one is the fury and fierceness against filthy Babylon filthy Babylon look at um, Isaiah chapter 13 we're reading from verse 19 Isaiah Chapter 13, and we're reading from verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms and the beauty of the Chaldeans' excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. The fury will come, the fierceness of the wrath of God will come upon filthy Babylon, and Babylon will be as Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. Revelation chapter 19, reading from verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it it shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of God. It will be terrible on the earth, but thank God you will not be here at that time. Number two here, number two is the fire forever for forsaking blasphemers. In Revelation chapter 16 verse 20, Revelation chapter 16, reading from verse 20, and every island fled away and the mountains were not found. In verse 21, it says, and there fell upon men great hail out of heaven, every stone about the wage of a talent and men blasphemed God. Men blasphemed God. Uh, can, can you think about those who are under divine chastisement, divine wrath, 
divine indignation and divine anger and the judgment of God is falling upon them. The first angel had put the veil, the second, the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh, pouring their wrath, and the water is affected, and the air is affected, and the ground is affected, and the, the sun is affected, and the scorching men, and punishment is coming from every direction, and hills are also coming upon them, and striking them down, and crushing them. And instead of repenting, instead of sin, we know it is our sin that brought this on us. All they will do is to blaspheme the name of God because all these plagues came from God and they were suffering with great suffering. It tells us in Revelation chapter 16 verse 9. Look at verse 9 there. In verse 9, it tells us of their blasphemy. In Revelation chapter 16, verse 9, a man was scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and repented not to give him glory. They repented not to give him glory. And the fire and the fury and their punishment will be forever and ever. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 10, Revelation chapter 14, reading from verse 10, it says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and it shall be tormented with fire, tormented with fire, tormented with fire and brimstone for in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And then it says in verse 11, it says, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up. How long? Tell me out aloud, how long? Forever and ever. They heard about salvation. They didn't get saved. They had about holiness, follow peace with God, follow peace with men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. They didn't even make any attempt to have peace with God and to have peace in their heart and to have peace with their fellow man. And they heard about the necessity of watching and praying so they will be ready when the Lord will come. No, they will not watch. No, that's not their concern. And they remain careless until the bride of Christ was taken away and they remain careless until the wrath and the indignation began to pour upon this earth. Well, this is their final end. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest. They have no recreation. There is no relaxation day nor night. Who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark. Of his name. What will they be doing? They continue in sin with hardness of heart and without any repentance. In Revelation chapter 19, reading from verse 20. Revelation chapter 19, reading from verse 20, it says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before them with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone i will not be there in Revelation chapter 20, we're looking at verse 10. Revelation chapter 20, and we're reading from verse 10. It tells us, it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I will not be there. Look at verse 15 there. In verse 15, it tells us, Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Uh, the question is, is your name in the book of life?
Are you born again? Are you a child of God? Are you a member of the family of God? Has your name been written in the book of life? And does your name remain in the book of life? Because whosoever, anywhere, anytime, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, when they will be in, you know, on the earth and in the fire suffering like that, those of us who are saved, sanctified, holy, righteous, ready for the Lord, we will be enjoying with the Lord and with the saints up in heaven in Jesus' name. That glorious day, it will be wonderful when we are in the presence of God to see you there and say, brother, you made it. Yes, by the grace of God, in the strength of the Lord, by the power, enablement of the Holy Ghost, you'll make it. I'll make it. We'll make it in Jesus' name. Look at number three now. Number three is the faith and the faithfulness of firm believers. The faith and the faithfulness of firm believers. The people who say, I have laid my hands on the plow. I will not turn back. The people who say, I believe in the Lord and I will not stop my journey halfway. I have, I'm holding on to the Lord and forever and ever. Ever, I will be with the Lord. Their mind is set. They are focused and they are fixed. And they say, this gospel I have, this salvation I have, nothing will take it away from my hand. Be it so for you in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 112, Psalm 112, we're reading from verse 7. Psalm 112, we're looking at verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. He shall not be afraid of bad news. He shall not be afraid of whatever they say in the news, they hear on the radio, they see on the net, they see in the newspapers. Everybody is running, they're running away and then some people say are you not going to run away run away to where there's no church and where there's no security and run away to where the power of God will not be there Be people of God will not be there it says no I'm not afraid because the Lord is with me the Lord will be with you his strength will be with you his grace will be with you he shall not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is tell me his heart is my heart is your heart is big trusting in the lord you'll be firm and fixed and focused until the end in jesus name psalm 57 i'm looking at verse 7 psalm 57 we're looking at verse 7 it says in verse 57 verse 7 my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed the wind is blowing the tempter is tempting, the trials are multiplying, and the situation of the world is going from bad to worse. All the same, my heart is fixed, oh God, my heart is fixed. We're looking at Psalm 108, verse 1. Psalm 108, we're looking at verse 1. It says, oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Whatever may be happening, your heart will remain fixed until the very end in Jesus' name. This gospel you have discovered and this gospel you possess, nothing will take it away from your life and from your heart in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 50, I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 50, we're looking at verse 7. It says, for the Lord God will help me. The Lord God will help me. Looks like I'm the only one in the house today. The Lord God will help me. In a time of trial, it will help you. 
in the time of temptation, it will help you. In the time when everybody is running up and down, helter skelter, the Lord will help you. In the time when everybody is collapsing because of the challenges upon them, the Lord will help you. Look at that again, Isaiah 50 verse 7, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. I will not be confused. I will not be confounded. I will not be conquered. I will not be defeated. I will not be trampled on. I will not be denied. I've lost my people. He says, therefore, because the Lord will help me, therefore, I will not be confounded. Therefore, have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. When Christ comes, you will not be ashamed. When the trumpet sounds, you will not be ashamed. And when the angels welcome the saints to heaven, you will be present there. You will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. When Christ divides the sheep from the goat, and then he says, goat will go to the other side, but the sheep and the children of God and the saints of God will go up with him. You will be there. You will not be ashamed in Jesus' name congratulations happy time for you and the grace of god multiply in your life in this life in any time every time you will not be ashamed in jesus name what are you i will not be ashamed what are you i will not be ashamed what are you i will not be ashamed satan will not catch you Evil will not catch you. Demons will not catch you. Temptations will not catch you. The trials will not catch you. You will not, you will not fade off and you will not die in the middle of the road. The Lord is coming. He will help you. He will help you. And you set your face as a fleet and you say, I will make it. And you will not be ashamed forever and ever in Jesus' name.